Why did you do that? Why? What's this all about? Hey y'all, it's Brandon. So in the last video, you seen that I got the bus fired up. On this video, we're gonna take it for a little spin, get it up to operating temperature, and decide what all needs maintenance. gauges and everything looks good I am tickled to death at how well this thing runs Should be nice and hot now, so let's check it. Well, it's hot. All right, so I don't know if you can see it or not, but it says hot up here, and that's right where the uh, level is. Let's go check the color here. I don't know if you can see the color. It's, a, it's still red, but it's not bright red. But I don't know if it's had any work done in on it or not. Oh, this thing's long. All right, one thing I did check before I drove it was the coolant level so the coolant in the radiator was low and there was nothing in the jug so I got topped it off first all right it still looks good it's not dripping any antifreeze anywhere so another thing you want to check hot is power steering fluid This van, the power steering fluid also uh, runs the brake booster. It's hydro boost. So you get the power steering and your brake booster runs off of the power steering fluid. So if you blow a line, you not only lose your power steering, you lose your power brakes too. It's right where it needs to be, and if you can see, it's a nice color too. So I really believe the church that had this bus did good maintenance. All right, so all the flood levels look good. I, uh, I think I'm gonna do an oil change. I did put a little, uh, you know, let's see if I can find it here. Well, 
my turkey's not going to shut up long enough for me to do this. So I'm going to shut the door. You probably can't hear the turkey. I still can. Oh, that stupid turkey. I'll tell you who's invited to Thanksgiving dinner. Before I started firing it up every day and driving a little bit, I put a little bit of this marble mystery oil in the oil and in the fuel tank. Um, my thought is maybe this will help clean it up a little bit. Like I said, it's been sitting for five, six years, something like that. And I'm just hoping maybe this will clean it up a little bit. I, uh, I've always been a Lucas guy, but I seen this and I thought I'd try it. I don't know. Uh, how do you test something like that? You just pick a brand and like it, right? So I don't know. So that's in the oil that is uh, in the fuel tank right now. It says you can put it in an automatic transmission. So I may do that. I noticed when I was driving a little bit, when I put it on the floor, the transmission was making a little bit of a whining sound. Hopefully I don't have to rebuild that like I did the Ford transmission. But if I do, well then I will beef it up a little bit. So all the fluid levels checked out good. Uh, when I filled the radiator, there's a whole bunch of crud in the radiator, right at the radiator crap. I don't know if it's rust or if somebody put stop leak in it, I, I don't know. But I'm gonna flush that out. I'm also, when I flush that out, I'm gonna delete the rear heater in it. Uh, it runs off of antifreeze and I'm gonna take all the seats and stuff out of the bus. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that rear heater while I'm at it. I may not get rid of it. I can always put it back in, but for now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, and get rid of it. So the oil, the oil has always looked good. It's clean. It looks just like I put fresh oil in it. But like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and change it and the filter because it's been sitting for six years. The transmission, that's the first time I've checked it hot and it looked really good. It's still red. It's got a little dark tint to it, but it is still red. It don't smell burnt. I'm gonna leave it alone for now. I'm probably going to go ahead and do the solid axle swap and everything else before I do anything with the transmission. So probably probably when I put the four-wheel drive tail housing on it and the transfer case, that's when I'll go ahead and do a fluid and filter change in the transmission. Just kind of poke around in there and make sure everything looks good. So the power steering fluid, it looks good. I did have to put about quarter quart of brake fluid into the brakes. I don't see the brakes leaking anywhere. Maybe the brake pads are that bad that the calipers have sucked up that much fluid. So whenever I change the change the brakes, I'm liable to make a mess underneath the hood right on top of that new computer I put on it. It's late now, no stores are open. So in the morning, I will run to Napa. It's about 12 miles away, I'll run to Napa and I'll get all the stuff I need to do these maintenance items. I'll try to do the maintenance on the bus tonight. It's been raining again, but luckily the driveway is dry. Um, if, we get, if we get just a little bit of rain, I mean, if we get a quarter inch of rain, uh, that little section of my driveway does flood, so my maintenance will be cut short. Try number two, hang out with me. We'll see if we can get it done.
terrible. I'm gonna go get the cane. Easiest maintenance item down. Looks like old James next. I'll leave with that all my tools. So let me grab a funnel real quick. As high as this is off of the ground. Sometimes I like to use a funnel to uh, make it a splash. I'll be right back. I have everything now. So what I like to do, I take this old junk funnel, I'm gonna stick down here, and as you can tell, it's high enough that it will catch that, or the majority of it. One thing here you can see there is a uh, magnet on this plug and it's got a little crud on it not a whole lot no big chunks this dirty one kind of clean all this up a little bit so I can see if it leaks Another thing I'm going to do is pre-fill the filter and lube up the O-ring here. I don't know why they can't make them with a flat bottom. This filter holds almost a quart. I'll fill it plumb to the brim, take a little oil, and pop around the edge of this. Lubricate that so it don't roll up when I go to tighten it. And we'll be right back underneath the truck. Remember, this is full, so you can't tilt it. Bring it straight up. Kind of use two hands. All right, one thing you want to remember, the oil filter 
just gets hand tightened. It does not have to be real tight. Wipe all this oil off of it so I can see it. I wish I had one of those oil filter cutters so I can see what the inside of that filter looks like. But I don't. All right, tight. Remember I tightened this? So now we can uh, go up to the top and we can start filling. So like I said before, I'm a Lucas guy, so much a Lucas guy that I even have their funnel. So the 5.7 calls for 5.136 quarts of 5W30. Yeah, pay no attention to that. The 1030 will run just fine in it. five quarts and remember the filter took almost a whole quart so there is eight ounces left in this I'm just gonna go ahead and put it in there so I let it run for probably a total of six hours with that Marvel mystery oil in it, hoping just to break down any crud that may have been inside the motor. I'm not gonna put any of it in there this go around. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and check it. I understand it's tilted a little bit, so it'll be off. And it's just a little over full. All right, so I'm gonna start it up and let it run while I uh, get all the tools out from underneath it and uh, back it off these ramps. All right, so one thing you wanna make sure is when it starts that it does get oil pressure. That way you know there's not something wrong with the filter. New parts don't mean good parts. It's got oil pressure. I'm gonna let it run. I'm gonna get the tools out from underneath it. Just a hair over full. Alright, so that was the easy maintenance. Mm -hmm. 